We've spent some time talking about some cannabinoids and dosing, but today I think we should spend some time doing a full cannabinoid breakdown. At least a basic one, I'm going to walk you through some of the main and more popular cannabinoids you've probably already experienced, and our endocannabinoid system, and give you a bit of history and a breakdown of the cannabinoids so next time you come into the store, you know exactly what you're looking for. How's it going everyone? My name is Otto from Vape Pros, your one-stop shop for all your cannabis and vape product needs and accessories. Let's first start with the endocannabinoid system. It acts as a regulatory modulator in the human body. It's a network of receptors located on cells throughout the body that regulates numerous biological processes, including emotional well-being, pain response, immune response, bone density, and reproductive activity. The ECS consists of various receptor sites. The two best known are the CB1 and CB2 receptors. CB1 receptors primarily located in the brain are mainly found in areas that regulates mood, movement, control, cognition, and memory. CB2 receptors are predominantly located in other parts of the body as well as the immune system, providing immune regulation, pain modulation, and neuroprotection. These receptors react with compounds created within our body. However, plants also produce cannabinoids that interact with our ECS. There are other plant chemicals that are thought to contribute to the cannabis experience known as flavonoids and terpenes, but we're gonna talk about these chemicals in a future video. Cannabinoids are tasteless, scentless compounds produced by plants. There are over a hundred different cannabinoids and more being discovered every day. The best known being THC and CBD considered to be the primary cannabinoids as they occur in the most quantities. So let's get into these compounds and figure out what they're all about. Discovered in 1964, Dr. Raphael Mechelum isolated and identified with his team what they believed to be the active ingredient in cannabis. Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol quickly became the basis of research, regulation, and the market value of the plant. THC is not a single compound. It has various variations such as THCP, THC8, and 11-hydroxy-THC, Delta-9 being the most well-known and studied. Delta-9 through human trials has been found to have various documented therapeutic effects, most known being as an appetite stimulant, mood elevator, anti-inflammatory, anti-emetic, and an analgesic agent or painkiller, particularly in the treatment of neuropathy. And as many of you know, anti-cancer properties have also been identified as THC promotes programmed cell suicide on cancer cells and slows the progression of tumors. And obviously we know THC as well for being one of the primary psychoactive cannabinoids that promotes the high aspect of cannabis. Isolated and discovered by chemist Roger Adams in 1940, Cannabidol, or CBD, is the second most studied phytocannabinoid. As it does not interact with our CB1 receptors, it does not produce the same mood-altering or high effects associated with Delta-9 THC. Well established in clinical trials as an anti-convulsant, the most scientific evidence is for its effectiveness in treating childhood epilepsy symptoms. In numerous studies, CBD was able to reduce the number of seizures and in some cases stop them altogether. In research in humans, CBD was identified as possibly helping with anxiety, insomnia, and chronic pain, and in some cases reported as may help with addictions such as cravings for tobacco. Now, we've talked about THCP before, as well as THCA, but what the hell is 11-hydroxy-THC? Discovered sometime around the 1970s, 11-hydroxy-THC is a natural metabolite that is produced in the body during digestion. When cannabinoids such as Delta-9 are ingested orally, they are digested and passed through the liver where they are subjected to the fast pass effect, meaning the cannabinoids undergo metabolism in a specific location. It is then converted to 11-hydroxy-THC, which is far more potent. That is why I highly recommend to watch our safe dosing video. Not only is 11-hydroxy far more potent than Delta-9, due to having to be created, the onset timing of edibles not only varies, but edibles have a longer duration of effect as well. So before we end it off here, I really want to give a quick bit of time to my favorite cannabinoid, CBN. 
naturally found in cannabis and is actually one of the last cannabinoids that THC can convert into during decarboxylation and degradation, found to demonstrate the same methods of making pain receptors less sensitive to pain signals, it's suggested that it has the most potent sedative effects and like many cannabinoids demonstrates anti-cancer effects as well as antibacterial properties. Well, that's going to do it for our cannabinoid breakdown. If you have any questions or comments about cannabinoids, please leave those in the comments down below, and I'll get them as soon as possible. My name is Otto from Vape Pros, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!